What is up, everyone? How are you guys doing today on this fine Monday morning? Afternoon? Monday afternoon? It's a Monday. It feels like a Monday. But it's all good because we're here now together and we're creating art and we're making, we're doing engineering, we're creating art. And so today we are working on this. This right here is a kinetic sculpture and there's gonna be basically a string attached to, yeah, 5 p.m. in UK, sure. So happy, good evening, you made it through your Monday. I'm, I'm still just trudging along here. It's 12 p.m. Toronto time. But yeah, what we're working on here is this sculpture where there's gonna be a bunch of strings attached to this wheel right here. They're gonna come through this ring. I haven't made the holes in it yet. It's gonna travel up most likely through here. This may change, but it's gonna travel through this, out of the, the center of this hole right here. The strings are gonna travel through, well down through the air, I guess, into these holes, and then they're gonna be distributed into these holes here. And basically as this gets cranked like this, this string mount right here is gonna go around the circle and it's gonna be pulling and releasing the strings in a sine wave form. So the inspiration for this, hey Neptune, how, how's it going today? I, I'm not gonna reveal your name unless you let me, unless you, you agree to it. So let me know if you're interested in being referred to by your screen name or by your real name. I know it now. Everyone, Neptune reached out to me post stream and uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. He's got some cool stuff in the works. I don't, Neptune, are you, um, are you, do you have like a Instagram page or anything like that? Or is it just, uh, it's all being done for yourself right now? But yeah, so this is the inspiration right here for this piece, something along these lines. And you can see this is the string mount device that goes around in circles right here. And as it goes around, it's creating these interesting waveform patterns, which are really cool. So yeah, it's, it's an adaptation of this. It's a, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if we can call this a steel. It's an adaptation. We'll go with adaptation. Definitely, I respect the work of Ruben Margolin and I have no intention of stealing his stuff and claiming it for my own. I just think it's really awesome. And I wanted to take a crack at designing my own sculpture with the same style. So yeah, like some of his stuff is incredible. Look at this one. I know I've been going on about this work for the last week, but yeah, this is where all the inspirations come from. But like his string structures are just phenomenal. Look at that. This is insane. So he's got the main wave going and then the side waves going. So cool, so creative. But yeah, going back to my interpretation, let's, uh, let's get into it. So we're gonna get rid of this backdrop. Let's turn off real view so nothing freezes on me here. Um, yeah, so in the last stream, we started by trying to route the strings around this section here. What's up, Mario? And uh, actually, Mr. Neptune, Dennis, Mr. Neptune's Creations, suggested this idea right here, where the strings come up and then down. And yeah, I think, uh, let's, let's go with this. Let's stick to this idea. I didn't come up with anything different, and I, the more I look at it, the more I like it. So let's keep going forward with this. And let's get this thing ready for print because we're pretty close actually at this point. The first thing we're gonna do actually is put the holes in this and hopefully things will start to make a little bit more sense once we do that. So we're gonna make a plane on a sketch on the top plane. And we're gonna make a, let's hide this axis right here. And we're gonna draw a line here and the hole is gonna go dead in the center of that line. Boom, two millimeters, I think is the number we've been going with. El Mario, you lost me on that one, buddy. Please expand. And yeah, we're gonna extrude a cut and I guess we can go uh, through all. Boom. And let's make sure that we are talking about only this body and we are, perfect. 
So now we're going to take that hole and we're going to circular pattern that around the axis that we just hid. Boom. 16 right there. Good to go. And there we go. So now we have our holes that these strings are going to come through. And for more context, it's going to look, we're going to go back to Mr. Ruben Margolin's Instagram page because for context, this is actually a perfect example right here. And if we zoom in, we can see what's going on here. So all these strings are coming around and then they're going through these holes here. And then I'm not really sure exactly what happens from there. There might even be multiple strings attached, but... Um, but yeah, they're going to go through here and through this bar right here and then down to these waves. It's similar to what mine's doing. It's going through these, this ring here, up through here, down to these bars. And yeah, El Mario, I always put a fillet on the back where it touches the bed because we don't want too much elephant's foot. And I'll get to that. None of this stuff is, is quite ready for print yet, but I think in today's stream, we're going to get everything completely ready for print. So yeah, let's just... Um, Let's keep moving along here. So I think what's going to happen is we're going to have the rope or sorry, the fishing line is going to come through these holes. It's going to travel up these sections here. So we're going to work on that next through. We're going to make a hole. All right. Yeah, let's get into this thing here and then we can keep going. So what I've done is I've cut this section out because I want the string to kind of like hover off of this rather than travel along the length of it. So let's put some fillets here. Boom, 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 just to make it look nice. And we're gonna make them maybe five millimeters. Nope, 10 millimeters. Nope, 15. Nope, I want bigger, 20. Boom, I like the way that looks. And then when the string comes out, like I want a guide for it. So we're going to build a guide, but I actually, um, I think what I'm going to do with this cut right here is I'm going to do it on a different leg. I want to do it on the main, the first one that we made, which is, let's see which one it is. This one. Oh, it is that one. Okay, great. So we're, we're all right. We're doing all right. So now I'm going to cut, I'm going to make some, um, I don't know, like little ribs here. What's up, Lock Gaming? How's it going? So there's gonna be some ribs right here. So the string, when it comes out of this hole, is gonna go up these ribs. But actually, before I do that, I want to put a fillet on this. And obviously that's way too big. So we're gonna make it two, one. It's gotta be one. All right. Yeah, that looks fine. And that's just so when the string comes through, it's got some round edges to travel along. So let's add that fillet to the pattern. Boom. Beautiful. So now here we can figure out, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this rib section. And I think it's going to be... Hmm. Just trying to think. Let's... Um, This right here, these need to go up here. Sounds like there's something large trying to get into my workshop from the outside. Sorry, bud, you can't come in. This is a no fly zone. So right here, this might be a little bit narrow. So I'm gonna address that. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's like two millimeters. We can adjust that with this sketch here. So this, I think, is going to be the constraint point right here. Is this distance? Maybe we'll make it two and a half. And then I want it to be like more noticeable than that. This right here. This will be the next constraint point. Maybe we'll give this an angle right here. Of Thirty sounds good. It's pretty arbitrary, making stuff up, but. I try not to think too much about dimensions because you can kind of get a little bit too much of that mental fatigue, that decision fatigue, if you're spending too much time worrying about dimensions. So that's why I always tend to just stick to like 
square numbers, square numbers, like round numbers or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to give this a dimension here. There's something flying around there. I don't know what it is. It sounds big though. As long as it stays away from me, I'm cool with it. Oh, it isn't. It's just a fly. Wow. I haven't seen one of those in a while. It's that we've, we've got this like a little bit of like a uncharacteristic heat wave going on. A heat wave in Toronto right now. Maybe that's what's causing these guys to come out. All right. So now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hole here. And that's for the string to feed back into this center point before it comes out and down. And yeah, we're going to fix this fillet after. We'll worry about that. Let's worry about the hole first. So the hole... I'm trying to decide, maybe I want this to flip up, come up like this and like this. And I'm doing all of this with 3D printing in mind here. It's very important that you remember how things are going to print. I know I say that a lot, but it is definitely a huge constraint with the way that I have to design because of the way that I have to manufacture. But I think what I'm going to do is make a sketch. Let's just do it and we'll, I'll explain it after. So I'm going to draw a whole it needs to be two millimeters and we'll figure out where it goes after. Just wanna make sure that there's enough space here. Two millimeters is the, kind of the, the winning size that we're going with. And I'm gonna constrain it to this line here with maybe like a millimeter away from that line. And then when I cut this hole, yeah, I could probably cut a straight line. We'll see, let's see what happens. If we cut a straight line, I may have to change the angle of this to something else. But that's the beauty of working with these dimensions. Hey, how's it going? And I guess we'll just do that. And that constrains it. So if I cut it, let's see where it goes right now. I'm not really sure. We're gonna go up to surface, to this surface here. And yeah, so that goes a little bit low. So an easy way to fix that is to adjust this sketch here. And I'm gonna give this a different angle, maybe like a 45. And that will get that sketch going this way when I cut it and yeah, that looks way better. So I'm not exactly sure what's gonna happen when the strings come up, they're gonna come through over here, through this hole right here, through here, and then they're gonna curl up and around and back down. And I'm not exactly sure how well that's gonna work. One thing maybe that would be useful is a big fillet on this right here, as big as possible. See what happens when we start going too big. Interesting. But yeah, that's like pretty a pretty nice looking fillet. Maybe we want it even bigger. But actually another thing that I was thinking is maybe I want like a spout or something to contain the lines as they come down here. And I'm not really sure the best way to do a spout right now. I have some ideas, but Maybe what I want to do is like take this and extrude it up. I actually only want a circle, so let's get rid of that. And we're gonna make a circle here. Maybe we'll make it go to there and we'll get this. And then this we're gonna to constrain to probably this right here, called radial. We're gonna go up. Maybe five millimeters, maybe six millimeters, maybe eight millimeters. Yeah, I like the way that looks. And then I want to cut this on an angle kind of like that. And I want to cut it maybe on a line that's like here. So I'm going to do... Hmm. This is gonna be, a t I need two planes to make this happen. So first let's make our line and we'll just go from like here to here for now. And then I need a plane, E, that's my plane shortcut. We're gonna go along there and we're gonna go on an angle relative to that face. 
want it to go this way and it needs less of an angle. So maybe like 30, maybe like 20. Oh, that's 200, that's too much. 20, I guess that's kind of the same thing. Um, maybe even less, 15. And then I need a plane off of that. It's kind of a lot of steps, but it's just the way it is sometimes with this, with CAD. You gotta just take all the steps to get to where you wanna go. All right, and then that's the plane that we're gonna use to make the split. We're gonna cut it, boom, we're gonna get rid of that. Boom, so now we got our angled spout. And that we're gonna give yeah, I actually really like the way that, that turned out. So now we're gonna give this some fillet. Maybe we'll do a fillet like that first, and then we're gonna fillet this edge with a smaller fillet. Like this. Isn't like that. So I think the problem is this right here is kind of getting in the way. So to make that fix that problem, we're just gonna have to extend this out even more. Anyway, make that 10, boom. Now let's see if we can get that second fillet here. Smaller. Mm, one, one and a half. So it looks a little strange, but I think the way that's gonna work is the strings are gonna come up, they're gonna come through the center here, and then you're gonna wrap over this edge right here. And this whole thing is printing, this side is gonna print down, it's gonna print up that way. So it's gonna print like a fairly nice, you know, like 3D printed round edge here, which should help. Okay, so now what I need to do is kind of finalize this structure here. And then we can wrap that around and then, um, yeah. So let's do that next. So I need some sort of guide. I think the guide, I'm gonna do it by drawing on this plane here. And it's probably gonna to have to come out of this, this edge here, like sort of like this, and then like that, and then like that maybe. I don't know, let's see what happens. We're gonna do like that and I'm not gonna dimension it yet because there's no point if it's not gonna work. So let's just see what happens first. Um, if we go like that and then make this like, I don't know, two, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. And we're gonna pattern that or mirror that like there. No. So the problem is I need to set an actual dimension here for this offset. What's up, Amir? How you doing? So this offset we're gonna do like maybe three, two, maybe one and a half, yeah. And then if we mirror that now on the right plane, nope, we mirror that on, which plane is it? The top plane, beautiful. So that's my guide right there and it looks kind of crappy. So I have a new plan, sweet. I'm gonna get rid of that and get rid of that. And actually we're not gonna get rid of that. We're gonna keep that. This is what we're gonna do. If I mid plane extrude this, the same thickness as these legs, three millimeters, Three and a half millimeters, there it is. Then I'm gonna, I actually don't wanna merge that right now. I just wanna keep it like that. Then I'm going to cut down the middle of this with a V shape. And then, yeah, that's, that's the move. All right, so actually what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna edit this guy. Um, I actually don't really even know what adaptive layers are. What are adaptive layers? Fill me in. Maybe I should know, but I don't. J 
just trying to think how I want this piece to look. Something like that. And this, I'm gonna just bring it in so when it rotates on the flat side, now we can uh, make this. Trim that, trim that. I actually wanna keep this, so when I trim this, I'm gonna keep it as a construction line. Boom. And that will hold that. And then we can adjust this after, but let's just see how it looks. So that's not bad. It's pretty good. That's strange. What is this right here? Ah, this, this needs to be changed now. You can go to the, from that line now. Beautiful. And then what, what, where, what's your problem, bud? Ah, uh, no, I never do that in the slicer. Like, I guess at the end of the day for me, it's good enough. I, I, I print everything at 0.2 millimeter and it's good enough for me. Like, realistically, making the layers like smaller, like makes it a little bit better, but not that much better. So, yeah, that's kind of where, where I'm at on that. Okay, so this is the problem here. It's this guy. I want this to like, Coincident with that, perfect. That fixes that. But yeah, so I just go with point two. It gets the job done well enough, and yeah, keeps me happy. Okay, um, so we can get rid of that sketch now. We're almost done this actually, which is great. I just want to get this this pattern right here below everything else, and I gotta figure out where that can go. Can it go here? Yes, it can. That's this cut. Can it go below? Where's this cut right now? Oh, perfect. Okay, so now we can uh, pattern that cut around as well. Beautiful. So now all these look the same. This cut needs to go into the pattern as well. So it may not let me do that. Yes, it will. Sweet. Perfect. So there's the inside there. So all the strings are gonna come up. And then we need to add one more thing before we finish this pattern. And that's a groove. I don't know, how should I do this groove? A couple ways I can do it, but I'm just gonna go with this method. And draw a line like this. Maybe to there. And I'm gonna grab this, this, and this. Let's see how this looks. Feature, extruded, revolve cut. This is the line we're cutting on. And we're gonna go mid plane, maybe 10 degrees, maybe 15 degrees, maybe 20 degrees, 35 degrees, 25 degrees, yeah. And it doesn't like that because it creates zero thickness geometry. So the way to fix that problem is to offset these. So they go past the edge of the part. And we're gonna go like, I don't know, one offset, make that base geometry. We're gonna extend this, and this, do that. We don't need this anymore. Extend this and this and cut those. And this thing is, What's this problem? We want it to constrain to these right here. Coincident. And you, coincident with you. Boom. And now we can get that groove to work. Amazing. Mid plane, what did we say? 25? Perfect. And we need to get that in there. I'm not gonna say what that looks like right now. We're not gonna talk about that. Which slicer do you use? Are you a Akira guy? 
I think for, um, I use Simplify 3D and I just don't think that there's a good option for adaptive layers. There probably should be, because it's a program that you have to pay for, but yeah. Oh man, do we keep this in this current shape? So anyone with a little bit of imagination can, can come up with something, an idea for what that looks like. I'll just show you at least with the, the holes. Oh my God. Did I just make it worse? Okay, maybe, maybe the way to solve this problem. Yeah, if I'm just thinking about how this is gonna look, the string is gonna come up here and to here. So I actually want this to be raised anyways. Let's, let's adjust this sketch. See what happens if I do this and we're gonna put this option back on. What's up JB, how you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the Monday stream. Right, we're just trying to figure out how to make this not look like something. I think I actually think you'll appreciate this. Before I make this change here, look at what these look like. I know you'll appreciate this. Oh God, what did I do? So we're adjusting this, that's why we're adjusting this. Okay, back to the, stop getting distracted by preschool kid jokes. Really grade school kid jokes. So what I'm trying to do is raise this groove up a little bit. What's up, Sai? How's it going? How was your weekend? Today we are just continuing work from what we, we did on Friday. We're gonna finish this piece off today. No matter what it takes, this is gonna be done today because we have some exciting projects coming up that need to be worked on. So what I'm gonna do is give this a dimension, constrain it, maybe at 15, because I, I don't like 13. And this we're gonna turn into construction geometry and boom. Let's see what we get now. That is better. I like that way more. Okay, so what's gonna happen? The string's gonna come out through this hole, through this groove, and then through this hole right here. So next thing we need to do is give these holes a little bit of a fillet. And that's gotta go here. And then let's clean this whole thing up, fill it. We're gonna make that like five. And this one too, and this one also. And then this one as well. Let's see what that looks like. Does not like that. We gotta do this one first. So we have a nice clean set of lines here. I'm actually gonna fill it this as well. Boom. I guess that could have been a straight line. Maybe that would be better as a straight line, but yeah, that's not a happy fill it anymore because of, I don't know, it's missing the edge, that's why. There we go. Yikes. Was it just rain a lot? Was that a lot of rain? Like what, what happened? What caused the flooding. It's crazy. I'm gonna get rid of that, get rid of that. And now I gotta dimension this thing. So that's good. And 
We need this dimension here. That's good. We give this a dimension. That works for me. Give this a dimension. That's not what I wanted. That works for me. I guess this needs a dimension because it can move. So we're gonna go to here. And then now I want this to be like a little bit less curved. And now we can adjust, I guess, that dimension. Yikes, okay. Give that a random dimension, maybe of three. And this will get one of five, less four. Beautiful. So everything else is good, except I just want to add, you know, adjust this to be a straight line instead of a curve. bigger dimension out of here. No, no. All right, fine, one it is. And this we're gonna apply to these lines as well. Doesn't like that. So those need to be smaller dimension. All right, two, yes, we're good. Holy moly. Well, stay safe out there, bud. That is, um, yeah, that's, that's not great news, but at least you're okay. And you're here. But yeah, that's scary. It's we've, we've had a flood here once or maybe twice in my lifetime. It was definitely scary. All right, so it's coming together. Yeah, seriously, good luck. So last thing I'm gonna add to these pieces before we finish this off is a chamfer. Let's see what happens. Doesn't like that because of this, this thing going on here. Let's um let's hide that first and see what happens. Chamfer. That's better. We may need to make these a little thicker just to get everything that we need in there. So I want that to have that chamfer. And then if I get rid of this, because this needs to have some sort of curvature to it. Yikes, that's rough too. Where Whereabouts are you located? What part of the country? Mr. Dennis Neptune. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna make this four millimeters, give us a little bit more room to play with here. That means, what are you? Where do you come from? You need to go all the way through. This is why I always do up the surface because when you make changes like that, so I don't know what was going on there, but yeah. Okay, now we can give this a fillet, give it its fillet back. Boom. And it probably needs that. That's great. Perfect. Oh, actually we need one more. Texas, I, I remember the, the big flood that happened. What was it, two years ago? That was crazy, crazy on the news. This isn't happy because it's missing some stuff. And what it's missing, I believe, is this fillet.
What's your problem? The specified plane should not be perpendicular to the sketch plane. Thank you for being so vague with your error messages. It's so classic. What a classic thing, SolidWorks, being so vague. Um, okay, what do we do? What do we do? How do we deal with this? I think this is what I'm gonna do. Let's get rid of, uh, let's go here. Let's see if we can split this. No. No. Because we need this. Can we split it on a curved surface? We can't. What is going on? Maybe we just need to make a new one of these. Circular pattern around this axis. And the features to be patterned are. Yeah, that was crazy, those floods. It rained for like, what, two straight weeks there? Something like that? Oh my God. This is a pain in the butt. This is just classic SolidWorks. Okay, I need this to here. Let's just try this one last time before we have to start taking some interesting measures here, there, boom. No, same problem. Okay, there's a very simple way to deal with this. It's just kind of a pain in the butt, but we're gonna do it. So I basically need to cut this leg off from this and this, and then pattern it as a body and then reattach it. So I'm going to make a sketch here with this circle. And there may be other ways to do this, but I don't wanna to have to undo all that work that we just did. So it is what it is. Extrude surface, gonna go this way to here, up to surface here, boom. So now we have a surface body here. We need to do the same thing on this one. That's crazy. We, I've literally never experienced rain like that in my life. Here, it rains for like two days straight and we're all just like, are we ever gonna see the sun again? And then it gets sunny. But you don't have to deal with the winters like we have to. So I guess there's a give and take to everything, right? Okay, so we have that surface now. Let's see if we can do this. So we need these two surfaces. We're gonna create a split. And this surface, we need this surface. We need this surface. And we need this surface. Okay. Boom, and boom. Let's see if that worked. So solid bodies, we got one, two, three, yes. That's what we needed. Okay, so now we can pattern this as a body, and that will pattern with all of the features we just put into it. And I guess at the end of the day, that honestly makes life a lot easier, so I probably should have done that in the first place. So now you can see we have six, well, it's 19 bodies, but we have 16 of these pieces in the center piece and the bottom piece. Now all we have to do is grab everything and combine it. Boom. So now we got this body and we got this body. And that is problem solved. Okay, let's keep going. See if this is gonna give me problems. It didn't, perfect. So that's basically the piece. Let's see how it looks in the assembly. And I think, I think this right here, we're gonna include on a different part. So we don't need that right now. And there's one other thing I'm gonna have to do to make this assemblable. Oh no. 
Oh no. Okay, we're good. What are, what are you? What are you? Let's just delete all this stuff because everything looks good without it. Oh, I know what that was. That was the top stuff. Okay, let's undo that. Sketch is just gone. What the heck? All right, we're gonna redo that stuff. That was for the spout. This is, I guess, you know, kind of the, the, like, obviously like I, I design in like a way that's, what's going on here? Where, what's going on with you? Oh no, don't, don't crash, don't crash. Okay, we're good. Like, do I have to like, how do I delete this stuff? SolidWorks is doing something weird right now. All right, we are, um, yeah, we're going to have to close SolidWorks and reopen it, I think. No. Save all. Honestly, it's not a day on SolidWorks unless you have to close and reopen the software. It just is what it is. So what were we working on this? Rebuild. No. Rebuild. All right, cool. That's what we were trying to look at. So let's go clean this baby up. Crash, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. Didn't crash. We're gonna delete this, delete all of this. Delete all of this. And then we can delete this as well. I have no idea why this is what's going on here, but it's so weird. It's letting me like save it. I can like change, you know, something's not happy, but it's letting me save it. So it's not frozen. All right, let's reopen that. Honestly, I think all CAD software like has these problems. This is what I've learned is that like, you know, like even Fusion, like so many people switch to Fusion and then we're suddenly just like, yeah, Fusion's so much better than than SolidWorks. Yeah. What's up, Kennedy? I'm a, yeah, I'm just here ragging on SolidWorks right now, but everyone's like, yeah, Fusion's so much better. And then it starts crashing as well. So yeah, it just is what it is. We may need to close it and open it again. Right now we're waiting for SOLIDWORKS to load or do whatever it's doing. But it looks like it's stopped responding. Let's close it and open it again. God damn it. It's pretty good though. We've, we did a whole week of streaming last week and we didn't have a single SOLIDWORKS problem. Let's, um, we're gonna task manager that shit. End task. And let's reopen it. And I guess in the meantime, might as well put some new music on. How about a chill out lounge playlist? I like it. All right.
Um, that's a good question, Skylar. I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head. We can pull it open. Uh, what's it? What is it called? System report? I'm, system information? Let's see. This is what we got here. So. Thanks, Kennedy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, summary. I don't, I honestly, I'm a, I was a Mac guy for a very long time and then I, I needed SolidWorks. So I got my Windows computer and I honestly don't know how to use it fully. How do I, how do I look at, no, no. Someone help me out here. Okay. Well, someone's uh, hopefully gonna tell me how to look at our, the computer specs. Um, let's try to, oh, we're good. Everything is back to the way it was. Okay, cool. So this computer I've actually, yeah, tons of RAM, tons of RAM, it's great. Um, with this computer, I actually, I had to reinstall Windows twice because I had updated, or Windows had updated automatically, and I know we've all been there before, but yeah, Windows updated automatically and um, completely screwed me because SolidWorks started lagging. I spent like three days. Oh, that, I was in the right space then, eh? System summary, or system information? Is that system summary? Okay. We'll look at this one last time. Lots of RAM, 64 gigs of RAM. I think, um, oh, there's the info there. My processor is it's pretty good, it's pretty good stuff. It's an i7. Honestly, I'm not like a hardware guy, so I don't know what a lot of this stuff means, but yeah, for any of the hardware people watching, there's the info. And let's go back to figuring out how to get this to look better. So one thing that we got to do that cuts through there and then we go down to here and now I got to somehow extend this cut around. Hmm. This is actually an interesting challenge here. I think the best thing I can do is this. We're going to go here. Um, so this project's not going to be like a YouTube video like my other projects. This is more just um, like I have all these these sculptures that I make for 3D printing and then I post them on my website and like places like that website calls 3D for people to download. So this is just another one of those um, mechanical sculptures that I'm creating. I think the detail of this of this work isn't like something that really pertains well to a full YouTube video. So but I do, I do have something in the works for a, a full, a full length YouTube video. By full length, I mean like maybe it's a 15 minute video, but it's really exciting project. And um, hopefully, as I get further along, I can talk about it a little bit more in my live streams. But right now, I'm planning to keep it under, under wraps for the time being at least. Um, okay, so let's just finish this off, and then we can. Um, let's just finish this whole thing off. I'm tired of this project already. Let's, uh, okay, so what I need right here is before I combine it, I need to take this hole right here and pattern it. But the problem is, I, I just need to remake it, really. So if I do a sketch on this plane, and I'm gonna try to grab this hole, boom, and cut that through all, and we're gonna select this body right here, boom. We're gonna pattern that cut, around this 16 times, boom. And then we can finish this combined function. Actually, no, first we wanna do this. First we wanna fill it that, include that fillet in the pattern. Yeah, Kennedy, which was your favorite of my YouTube videos so far? 
that's not happy about that. So what we have to do is make that fillet smaller. Hopefully that's better. Just because they can't be touching, I guess. Yeah, that'll work, boom. Okay, now we can keep moving. So the last thing we need to do with this piece, this is how it looks on the main assembly right here. The last thing we need to do is like give like a nice clean spout for the string to come out of. And we've already done this once, but I had to delete it. So we're gonna do it again, it's quick. Make a circle, constrain it to this edge right here, called radial, get this inside loop. Extrude up, I think we have to go like 12 maybe. Now I'm gonna make a sketch on this plane here and that's gonna go from here to here. And it's nice, when you've already done something, it's like I can just like fly through it the second time around because I've already done it. So now we need a plane off of that, boom. And we need this line in it. And we're gonna make an angle from here and I believe we went with 20 and we flipped it. Yeah, so it's easy to just redo things, even though it's kind of annoying to have to do it. Uh, we actually, I think, made that less, like, oops. Don't need that. We made that, like, 15. So let's go with 15 instead. And then we need to make a plane off of that. And I believe that was four. Maybe we can make it even five. Check, split. We're gonna cut with that plane, boom. And that's the part that we're getting rid of. Delete that body. And then we gotta just finish with the fillets. And I think we made that six. Maybe we can even make it seven or 10 even. Bigger is better, I think, on this. As long as we can finish that curve off. And that, we're gonna have to make like two, one, one, one and a half. No. One and a quarter, one and a quarter. All right. So that works for me. Okay, so there's one last thing we need to do with this. And that is find a way to attach this piece to this base piece. So this base piece, and also, we're gonna to need to attach this actually to the base piece as well. So let's just see how this looks. Hmm. I think what I'm gonna do is this. Let's just try it and if it doesn't work, we'll try something else. And it's just the way it goes. Um, so what I want is a circle. This is gonna be, there's gonna be a pin going through this. Thanks Dennis, yeah, I think my, the Incursion Machine is by far my favorite project that I've worked on. And then, actually the Fling Ball was my second favorite, Typewriter was the third. And then there's some uh, stuff that I'm not that proud of on there as well, but you know, it's all on the, the it's all on the spirit of like learning about what kind of content I want to make. But yeah, um, thanks for watching the videos. I really appreciate that. Like all that watch time really, really helps. So, I really want these to not be like on the same angle as these holes. So I'm gonna to try to get them in between like here and maybe here and maybe here and here. So we need, f I'm gonna make four total. Do I need four? I think I need four. Four feels like the right amount. There's no real engineering behind that. But yeah, that looks better. What is the angle of this guy? I guess this is where I want it to be in the middle here. So I can just take away this dimension and make this collinear with this. Art creating art, exactly. It's kind of my thing right now that I've been excited about. And um, the next pro project that I'm working on that I shall not be naming 
And don't try to convince me because it's not gonna work. I'm a brick wall. Although if you try really hard, you could probably convince me because I'm terrible at surprises. But I'm a brick wall, so don't try. But it's also another kind of art making art thing. And that's different from the clock idea, but I, I have this tendency to uh, jump across ideas, but I think you'll understand why I'm, I'm not working on the clock next. I might work on the clock on stream, but it's not my main focus for the next project. That's the clock that um, Mrs. B, which I don't know where Mrs. B is today. She said she was coming. She didn't come yet. But yeah, that was the, um... <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's, it's all fun and games though. I just gotta, I gotta keep you guys on your toes. If I give you guys too much, you're not gonna be, it's not gonna be as interesting. Once I'm like halfway through the project, maybe I'll reveal it. I'm gonna take that and we're gonna mirror those on this plane. This and this mirror. So now on this piece, I'm gonna have to make some things to hold those tabs. And maybe I will make this a little bit bigger. This is where my, uh, sometimes I, it comes to bite me in the butt because I ended up making these walls all the same thickness. I can't remember where I did it, it's right here. Not that one. This one here. So I'm going to change this from that. And make this 10. And then I want this outer ring to be bigger, like 30. Let's see what we got. And that's just so we have space. Okay, so 30 was way too big, but now we can adjust it. 15, too small. 20, too small. 22, mm, too small. 23 and a half. Yeah, that's way better, okay. So now what we can do is make, we can edit this part and we can make those. Shafts coming out, these are nine, nine millimeters. And I'm just gonna do that first. And I think I made that three and a half. So this is gonna be 3.7, a little bit of clearance. 3.6, less clearance, I want that to be tight. And then we can make our C-clamp ring thing. Point seven five. give that drop 45 degrees, then go the other way. And then the top segment, and then give it a chamfer. Zero point five, boom, and then now we can mirror that. Boom. Where's the right plane? This, 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 and this mirror on this plane, and then we need both of those. And we can mirror that on this plane. Mirror. Perfect. So now the way this is gonna go together, this is gonna, I'm gonna print this. It's gonna pop into here, C clamp into place. And then, yeah, that should be good. So now I just wanna think about how to assemble it with the string. So I guess on one hand, I can feed the strings through here. So it's gonna, Yeah, what's up? Thank you so much. Thanks for joining, I, of course. And I appreciate your, your comments and messages. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. So I've found at least with these with these holes, 0.4 clearance is always great. Uh, well, I guess it's not for everyone. Yeah, you know. Chemicals, also chemicals. Um, but yeah, 0.4 clearance on these holes, that seems to work. Like on these rotating holes, 0.4 clearance always works. So like this is nine, these holes are always 9.4 and I'm doing my nine millimeter C clamps. And yeah, I never have a problem with that. It always seems to like rotate quite well. So yeah, that's, um, the clearance I go for when, it, when I'm doing like something that I want, like a tight fit, 0.22. But it really depends on the printer as well. Like often, often um, on one printer, the clearance will be perfect. And then on the other printer, it'll be just a little too small. But yeah, for rotating shafts, 0.4 always works. Okay, I'm like really excited to get this printed because I actually have no idea how this is gonna work. So. The last thing I need to do is just figure out where to put this thing onto this. I want this to print onto this. And I'm wondering if I want to like come out on an angle this way. And then this obviously is gonna be a separate piece. And we can clean that up after, but that's basically good enough as it is. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, Let's figure out this piece and then it, we're basically done. Then we just clean up the, everything, add some chamfers where they're needed and then set everything to print. So yeah, often like, you know, doing these CAD designs for me, like I just, I tend to move things around a lot and just like think, this is my subconscious working. I, uh, this is like a thing I've recently learned is trust your subconscious. It's capable of doing a lot of, of stuff. And then now I'm at that point where it's just like, all right, let's just dive in and make something happen. So I'm going to get rid of this. I remember we worked hard on it, but let's get rid of it. And get rid of all the stuff that's broken now and hopefully it doesn't break anything else. Don't need that. It definitely takes time, but it's also really enjoyable to just get lost in, oh, let's actually keep that. We can use that as a reference on. Um, it, you just gotta, you get lost in the, the process and yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. So one thing I actually wanna make sure before I do this is I wanna make sure I have space. Also, I think I'm gonna take this this is just really getting sidetracked here, but I've decided to be okay with my sidetracks as long as it allows me to further the design. But I think I want this to like have more of this shape to it. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure that out after. Okay. So let's edit this piece in the assembly and we can sketch on this plane. And we basically just need this and I'm gonna take it and then I'm gonna reestablish the dimensions. So th these dimensions right here basically mean that it's connected to the sketch. And I'm working on this part, but this sketch that I just connected to is on this part. What's up, Thomas? So I wanna, I wanna disconnect that because I'm gonna end up giving it its own dimensions that are relative to the part that we're working on. But yeah, so just a weird way of doing it, but now I can edit this and give it its own dimensions. Thanks, Tomas, I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day. And let's see if I remember how I dimensioned this. 55, that's a good dimension there. And then we're gonna give this a dimension of 95, perfect. This is I think three and a half. Beautiful. This and this have to be collinear. And then same with this and this, collinear. And then what else do you want from me? Oh, 
this needs to be connected to its origin here. You too, thanks for checking in. Thanks for stopping by. Perfect. Okay, so the only question I have is, do I want this here? Do I want it like, how do I want to do this? I don't really know. I'm thinking right now it's gonna come out from an, from an angle from the bottom here. And maybe I'll put a fillet there to like clean that up. So let, let's just go with it for now. We'll get the holes in there and then we can figure that those logistics out. So for the holes, how did I do those holes? I believe I had a plane here. And then I sketched on that plane. Yes, this is actually how I did it for sure. Okay, and then from there, and then we're gonna draw a construction line here. So a lot of it often when like when I'm designing what I do is I try to make things like as like parametrically adjustable as possible. And it takes extra steps sometimes, but what that does is it helps me down the road to make changes and adjustments to the drawings. And that's kind of what this step is. This is just a construction plane so I can parametrically adjust the holes that I'm about to put in later. And that's why I'm like doing things this way. So I'm you know, like making this line, instead, I could have had a dimension here, I'm changing it to this line. So all I have to do is adjust this one dimension and that will adjust on both sides. And I do that by making those two construction lines, making them equal. So now you can see if I want to bring these two lines in, I'll just exaggerate to show you. If I make it 10, they both come in 10. Or I actually want it to be three and a half, they can both go at three and a half. So now what I can do is I'm trying to cut holes through this. So I can make a plane on the end of this, make a sketch, draw a circle on there. That's gonna be two millimeters. Make the cut up to this surface, boom. And then now when I make a pattern, and let's see if I can do it, um, What's the way to do this pattern? I believe it was on a curve driven pattern and it's on this curve. Yes. And it's equal spacing along that curve. And so now to just drive the point home, if I wanted to adjust these curves, the spacing between them or whatever, let's just say I wanna bring them in more, I can do this. I go on this sketch, adjust this one dimension. Let's just say I make it 10 and you'll see it brings all the circles in equally. And that's just like a really simple way to, to like keep things constrained and make it really easy to adjust. And yeah, everything's equal here. So one last thing actually is I wanna have some fillets on these holes here. And so we're gonna draw those. That's probably good. And then we'll add that to the pattern. Beautiful. And then now we got to figure out how we're going to attach that to the base. But I think in the meantime, while we're figuring that, while the subconscious is working on it, I'm going to throw these chamfers in. Maybe I'll make them two, three, four, five, two, three and a half. I don't know. Three and a half looks good for now. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. What I wanna do here is I wanna have this come down on a 45 degree angle, so it's printable, and then it's gonna to attach to the base and maybe have a big fillet connecting it to here. And so the way I'm gonna do that is first I'm gonna make a mid plane here. I'm gonna draw on that mid plane a line, make sure Make sure that this is pierced on this edge. Pierce is just, it just means that it's like connected on that plane. And then I can make a construction line here. And 
constrain that to 45 degrees. Okay. And then I also want to make sure that this line is in line with this here. Coincidence. Perfect. So now, that's just kind of like a reference line. Now I can do this, make a sketch on here. And I'm basically just going to draw I'm not exactly sure what a dovetail is, but I'll look it up after I do this and we can see. I'm still working on my lingo here. I just wanna hide some of these planes so I, know, I can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna draw basically a circle, an arc, that is concentric with this arc here. Boom but I also want it to be on this, on this point. Boom. Coincident. Okay, so now that I have that, I can draw basically like this. And I'm gonna try to keep it to be the same length as this guy here and all on the same lines. Make those collinear and equal. And same with that. Collinear and equal. And then this and this need to be concentric and that should be fully constrained, perfect. And then now what I'm gonna do, I can hide this or actually we'll keep it because we'll use that as a guideline. So we're gonna take this sketch and this face and perfect. There we go. And then now we can connect them. So we're gonna take this line. We actually need this outer line here. Sketch. Oh, shoot. I don't know what this purple, what is this purple line here? Go away. I don't know what's going on with my SOLIDWORKS today. I might just need to restart this computer and I'll do that at the end of the stream so we don't have these problems tomorrow. But we're just gonna work with it for now. We need that line and we're gonna do this to here and here. It doesn't really matter and to there. This needs to be collinear with that. And then, um, you know what, just, just for the sake of perfectionism. It's gonna go there. Concentric. And we're gonna give that a dimension. Really slowing down the machine right now. 25 works, okay. Now we can extrude that up. And I don't know, we'll give it like five, yeah. So now we have this problem here, but it is fine for now. But let's see how that looks in the assembly. So that looks pretty sweet. All right, let's see what um, Neptune, let's see what dovetails are all about here. What is dovetail? Dovetail joints. Um, I, don't, I don't think we're gonna do dovetail joints here because it's all gonna print it. It's all gonna, it's all gonna print in one piece. Like this, this whole thing is one piece. So maybe what I need to do is this. Move face, doesn't need to be that much. Three, four, just make sure that's attached, boom. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but it worked, so yeah, sweet. And then I was thinking a nice fillet here and here, 
and here, and we'll do a different one on the inside. Big fillets, can we even do 10? Nope, yeah, we can, cool. And then I wanna do a fillet on the outside here. I'm actually gonna change this from 10 to something else. Let's make it like seven, yeah. It's more reasonable. We'll make a fillet on this, and then that's gonna be seven plus three and a half. Let's see what that looks like. That's kind of weird. I don't like how it did that to this, to these things. So let's make that smaller. I was just trying to make it so this fillet and this fillet were concentric, but let's make it so it doesn't interfere with the already made fillets there. Let's see how it looks, it might be fine. Uh, seven and a half. Okay, yeah, that looks good enough to me. And then maybe we'll fill it this. Cool. So that piece looks all right, I think. That's the base. The last thing I wanna make sure with this base is that it will fit on a bed. Normally I design for beds that are like 210 by 210. And so I'm just gonna draw like a 210 bed on this and see what it looks like. I can't remember what size this is, but two ten. You know what, actually I'm gonna do it with this style. Three point center rectangle that I can change the angle of. This and this are equal length. This is 210. And now we can just like drag this around and it might not fit. Oh, it'll fit, look at that, perfect. Barely, but it will fit. That's, that's money, okay. Cool, so I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with the way it looks. So the last thing we gotta do is just make sure. Oh yeah, true. Okay, let me put some fillets on these and see if I can improve it. But I don't, I don't really like the snowman shape. It's just not doing it for me. So let's see if we can improve that shape. A couple things first. First, we're gonna fill it this inside cut. And maybe five, four, three. Oh, that's the problem. Get rid of that. Okay, eight. And maybe we're gonna even make this fillet bigger, like 15. Okay, and then if we fill it the outsides, no, not chamfer, fill it. Maybe that will get rid of the snowman shape sufficiently for me. This is purely just a design thing, so yeah, sometimes well, it's important, but this isn't a functionality thing. See how that looks all in. Looks kind of weird. Yeah, we're just gonna go straight lines on it and I'm not even going to, here we'll go here. Yeah, we're gonna do it like this. Straight line from there to there. A little bit cleaner look for my liking. Make sure everything's tangent. And then go here and grab those regions, boom. So I don't love doing things this way, but in this case, it's fine. Oh, look who decided to show up. What's up, Sarah? You never have to apologize for being late. We're still here, we're still chilling. And I'm just happy to have you. Anytime, anytime anyone can come, I'm just happy for, for you guys to be here. 
Okay, so Sarah, what you have missed, and just to fill anyone else in who's, who's just showing up, basically we are making this system to, you tie the, the fishing line to this, it's gonna come through these holes, up these lines, into the center, up and out, through these holes right here, and then fed through these holes right here. And it's gonna give this kind of effect here, where as things are gonna turn, it's gonna be pulling uh -oh. we lost our video. Okay. As it's gonna be turning, it's gonna be pulling the strings in this circle, and that's gonna be creating this waveform underneath here. And so my version is gonna look kind of like this, so it's similar but different. This is gonna mount on the wall, this is gonna mount on the wall, wherever wherever the the recreator of this piece of art wants to put it. And as you crank this, it's gonna rotate this around, this string mount, the strings are gonna get pulled and it's gonna create a waveform underneath this, wherever this decides to be. And yeah, so, okay. We're basically done this part. So what I'm gonna do is finish this off, at least for now and we're gonna set it to print. So all I really need to do is add some fillets um, or chamfers actually. I'm gonna chamfer this and we're gonna make it like a decently sized chamfer. And then maybe this outside one, beautiful. And then I don't know what's gonna happen if I chamfer this, but I want this to be chamfered as well. Not you, you. And I want you to be chamfered as well. And then this bottom edge, I also would like to be chamfered. But maybe I want that to be, eh, that's fine. Okay, so now we're cleaning things up a little bit. And then I need a chamfer on the top of this guy, which I actually would like to go back to this and just do it here instead. This is just so I can keep track of it down the road. Nope, I went too far back here. There we go. And then, I don't know, I think this is ready actually completely for print right now. Let's do some final checks to make sure. Yeah, I, I think it's good to go. Sweet. The V-Bucks, Lebowski. I don't know if my, my pop culture references are just not there. So if I'm missing something, you gotta fill me in. If I'm not missing something, then yeah. Okay, so the only thing I don't like is that this is overhanging this. And maybe we're gonna fix that by changing this to one and a half instead. And maybe we can turn this in 2.25. It's still overhanging a little bit. So how are we gonna fix these? Oh, easy to fix actually. These don't need to be so far out. So we can do this, 62. No, no, 62. Too small, 63. Perfect. So let's see how that looks in the assembly. So that should automatically adjust the location of these pins because I drew these pins off of that. And now it's kicking air at me. And where's that air coming from? Interesting. Is it this one? Is it this one? It's this guy. Doesn't doesn't like something going on here. Weird. Okay. Fine. Whatever you want, SolidWorks. Sometimes you gotta just give in. Okay, cool. 
So I'm not sure if I really love the way this looks, but I really want to see it working. And maybe it'll look better with the strings coming out of it. What do you guys think? I just realized there's no music on. We're gonna change that. With a uh, retro wave volume two playlist. Love the names of these playlists. Okay. So last thing we need to do really is figure out how we want this piece to look right here. So I think this needs to come out a little bit further because I want this to be lined up with this right here. So this is how we're gonna do it. Thanks, Dennis. Yeah, I, you know what? We're gonna go with it. I think it's I think it's good. It's good enough. Good enough for rock and roll, as my old guitar teacher used to say. So for this, I'm gonna just adjust this a little bit to do first. We're going to align this to this right here. So take the wall bar, get rid of this mate. Where are the mates? Where are my mates at? Oh, it's got no mates. Okay, cool. Uh, align that to that. So DJ, I'm making a string, a string sculpture that looks, the best way to describe it looks kind of like this. So as things spin, it creates this waveform. And yeah, for everyone who's heard that multiple times, I apologize. I need to find a better way to like, put what I'm working on somewhere static on the screen. Um, I'll, I'll work on that for future streams. But right now at this point, we're just working on finalizing the design so we can print it, test it, see how it works. So this, let's edit this now. We're gonna sketch on this, take that, and we're gonna bring this down to here, boom. And then now we're going to take this piece and just adjust its sketch plane to here. And then adjust these. So the one thing when you're doing design and you're sketching the assembly environment is you gotta be really careful about making certain changes because it can really screw things up. So this is just a small issue that I have to fix, but it's because I changed the reference points of everything. And then the last thing I need to do is, I've done that, boom. And I need this to go the other way, actually. Boom. So um, this needs some fillets as well. We're gonna go back here and put the fillet in before we do the pattern. My fillets are here. And I wanna put some bigger fillets on this, but that's way too big. No, that's too big too. Maybe like two, beautiful. Thanks, Miss B. This is actually, uh, it's funny, this hat right here, I designed it cause like I liked the rocket and then like two weeks later, the whole to the moon thing came out and it like blew up. But yeah, these are my uh, JBV creative hats. And actually I'm thinking at some point this week, I'm gonna be doing a, a giveaway on stream, maybe on a Thursday night stream. And if you check my schedule, I'm gonna be doing a different stream schedule this this week just because I did a poll and many people said, said that the, the best time for them would be five to seven on weeknights. So I wanna to try to incorporate, or what am I trying to say? I'm trying, I wanna to try to make it so everyone can watch these streams. Good for me, good for you. Um, honestly, Andreas, I have no idea and it's, it's not up to me. I'm just here doing my thing, so. If you're here and you're not happy, uh, I apologize, but you don't need to stay.
Okay, now we're gonna pattern in these fillets here. Boom. And then finish this piece off. I think I'm gonna take the same approach that I did here. Put some three and a half millimeter fillets here. Boom. Boom. I think it's fun. I can't speak for everyone though. We're gonna add a big fillet on this back side here. Maybe make it five. I'm actually gonna add these same fillets to these corners as well. Um, I do, I do publish them. I don't know, I don't know why you can't see them, but they're they're there somewhere on my on my YouTube page. I don't know if YouTube's changing the way things are done right now, but um, maybe they're they're just like not visible for some people. They are for others. I'm not really sure, honestly. Okay, so the last thing I'm doing is putting a hole so I can mount this piece to the wall. And I'm not sure what screws I'm going to use to mount it. Let me go see what I have, actually. I don't really know what like, a good standard mounting screw size is, but I've got these screws. They're three... Can you see? 3.93 or whatever. Four millimeters is a good size, I think. So we'll make these four and a half, so there's some clearance. And I'm actually gonna make these radiuses bigger because I want them, do I want them smaller? You know what, maybe I'm just gonna not have these like in the corner like that. I'll put them inward like this. 2.5 from the edges. And I feel like three screw holes across is probably sufficient. So make that, we're gonna mirror this guy. And we're gonna make this equal to this. And we'll cut that down. Um, through all, boom. And yeah, that should look fine. Like I think having the screws like visible is actually completely fine in this case. And we're gonna do the same on this back plate here. I don't know where to put those screw holes for this back plate. I was gonna use, I think it's called a French, I can't remember what it's called, a French something, French something or the other. Just like an angled piece that you can like slide in, but I want to make sure that this is really securely mounted to the wall. So uh, we're gonna make screw holes in it, and we're gonna try to find a nice place to put them. Yeah, I think um, I think that YouTube is like trying to push live, try to take some of uh, Twitch's market away from Twitch, and. I guess for me, like I, I was thinking if I should stream on Twitch or if I, I should be streaming here and I decided to stream here. Of course, I will not forget you guys. And honestly, I don't, I don't think I'm, I don't think this is gonna make me a famous person, but it's at least fun. I'm doing the work anyways, and it's great to have you guys hanging out. And then we need to, Boom. French cleat, exactly. Thank you, Neptune. Mr. Dennis. Dennis, Texas Neptune. All right. So yeah, one last thing to, to finish this whole sculpture off is some screw holes on the top of this. And I'm thinking maybe we wanna put them here I guess we could potentially even put them inside here so they're kind of hidden. I just wanna make sure it doesn't interfere 
with the gear here. And so let's see what, what kind of clearance we have. I'm with you on that, Sarah. I love it. This is awesome. It's so much fun. Nope, we're gonna just do screw holes directly into the top of this and then maybe we'll make some caps. That works for me. Let's do it. So we're gonna put one here, maybe one here, here, and I don't know. Here. It's so arbitrary. I'll put one here, 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 and here. Okay. So, and we're gonna countersink them down. So we need some big holes for the head of the screw. And the head of the screw is like eight and a half millimeters, maybe a little bit bigger. We'll do it just for incorporating other screw sizes and because we have the space. And I'm going to do that so we can center it in here. And I'm probably just gonna go one, two, three, and then like four, maybe? I wanted to put it in here, but I guess I can make either these flanges thicker or I can make, it's probably nicer if they're in here, hey? Okay, we're gonna make the flanges thicker. Oh man, I just got hit by this like serious wave of hunger, it's crazy. Okay, um, how can we do this? I guess we have space in here. Let's just see. The only thing is if I make these, oh, I can bring this down actually. That's like legacy from the other design, which I don't need that to be raised up anymore. Let's get rid of that. Sweet. Yeah, I just, let's just get rid of that. Oh, okay. Ah, we'll eat when we are done designing this piece. Let's just fix this dimension first. So this. And this need to be coincident. Boom. Then we can now adjust this. Let's see what the distance is. Ten. So we gotta bring this down to ten point. I'm gonna go point two. That little point two is nice to have that extra clearance. Oh, don't freeze on me. Okay, we're good. And then, I guess the question is, do I make, what do I, what do I do? Thanks, Neptune, thanks for hanging out. It's, uh, it's been great to have you. And hopefully we'll see you in a future stream. Hopefully you can make it to one of the, the weeknight streams. I'm just trying to figure out the logistics of the screw holes here. And it's funny, cause like this is the kind of thing that you, you don't really think about until like the very end and sometimes it really affects what you were doing in your design. And um, now I'm just gonna let my ADD get in the way and I, I just decided I wanna create a fillet on this. Okay, that's nice. So I'm just at that point, I'm trying to decide, do I, do I put the screw holes on the outside or do I put it on the inside? We're gonna go on the outside. Back to the original plan. Ten point five sounds good. And we're gonna cut that down like, 
I think I'm going to be doing my streams. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best time. I'm trying to work my schedule for a consistent good stream. But I did a poll on, on YouTube and a lot of people said they'd be better off if I streamed from like five to seven instead of 12 to two. So I'm gonna to try to incorporate that and just see which times work better for everyone. And yeah. So it's not gonna be a nice stream as well. It's just gonna, it's gonna be either or. Oh, that actually works great. I love that. Three screw holes, it's perfect. In fact, I actually want it to be Maybe the other way around. So I have one in the middle here. Okay, cool. We're gonna just make the adjustments. But yeah, the streams are gonna probably move to the evening, but at least this week I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be doing Monday and Wednesday at this time, and then Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday at this time, and then Thursday and Tuesday and Thursday in the evening. And we'll just see which, which one works better. Okay, perfect. So finish this off, make the, Center holes here, boom. And that's gonna be, I think we said four and a half. Draw. And we're gonna do circular pattern that as well. On this axis, three, boom. Okay, I think we are officially done. Which is sweet. So the last thing to do is basically just export everything for print. And I'm gonna do that quickly now so we can get this thing on the printer tonight and see how it works tomorrow, which is awesome. Last checks, final checks before we I'm trying to remember why I made this so tall. I think it was for that clearance. Okay, that looks good. Uh, let's hide this and see how these gears look. That all looks good. This flange might be a little big, but it's all good in the end. Um, I took the flange off of here, but I think I want to put it back because I want this quite a big surface area here. Yeah, it's yeah. let's just do that. But that's actually separate from the base. We're working on the base here. All right, stay focused, Jay. So I guess I'm wondering, should I make this gear? No, nope, that's good. I want that to be below because the ring comes over it. Okay, uh, yeah, this looks good. Ready for print, amazing. This is like my favorite part of any project is when I just export it, throw it on the printer. Let's see how long it's gonna take to print. I have no idea. Base. All bodies, there's only one body here, yep. So let's pull it open, simplify. Uh, well, my name is, is actually Jay. So it's been there hiding in print in plain sight. Okay, so it says you cannot auto arrange, but we just need to change the angle on this to like, that. Perfect. So this is my smallest printer. This is my Anycubic, and I believe the bed size on this is 210. Let's just see. Machine, yeah, 210. It will fit no problem on the Prusa in its normal orientation. And then on the Ender 3, it should fit no problem as well. Oh no, it doesn't. But if you orient that 45, Thanks, Crazy Pasta. I really appreciate that. I have to humbly disagree, but that's just my style. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks so much, man. I really appreciate it. All right, so let's see how long this is gonna take the print. I'm guessing five and a half hours, maybe more. Let's see, four and a half hours. All right, not bad. So we're gonna actually have no problem at all making this for tomorrow. We're still missing the danglers, but I'm probably gonna do that off stream so we can assemble this tomorrow on stream. 
Uh, not Jason, just straight up J. It's like Homer J. Simpson. The J stands for J. Confusing. And in case you guys are worrying, wondering about my print settings, I basically always print at point two. These are always my layer settings. My infill is normally 20%, normally the grid pattern on Simplify. That looks like this. On the interior. And yeah, it really just works for me. I print in PLA. I've been using the PLA eSun PLA Plus. I am not sponsored, but it works well. It looks good, so yeah. All right, let's, um, oh, that's not what we need. We need this. Let's get the other pieces and see what they're gonna look like in the slicer. So we need to just throw some chamfers on this gear and maybe I'm gonna give a little bit of uh, style to this gear. Thank you, that was, uh, that was one of my, probably my toughest projects that I've worked on. Definitely caused the most stress in my life. But there was a really cool result in the end, which was fun. So I'm gonna just do, uh, I don't know. I, I honestly change these dimensions every single time I do it, but it is what it is. I'm just gonna cut out the center and make some of those those slot things. Through all, boom. Okay. Now we're gonna make the slats, sketch a line here. Constrain it to here and here. Mid plane 1.6. Up to surface, boom. I'm gonna change this, these dimensions to 1.6. The reason I use 1.6 here, not 1.5, is just because of the, I print with like a 45, sorry, a 0 0.4 millimeter wall thickness. So I'll show you on the slicer when I put this in, it'll make a lot of sense. Add some fillets, cause I like the way they look. And we're gonna make them four here, or maybe three. That looks bad. Better. Not bad. Better. Oops. Yes. Get rid of this face. Go away. Go away. Okay. Those are gonna make one. Now we can. Pattern this around the circle, boom. And maybe we'll make it, I don't know, like six. It's kind of like a car rim. I like the way that looks. And this is how it looks in the design now. Beautiful. So now we can give the chamfers on either side. Boom. Boom. Ready for prints. export that as an STL. So often when I'm doing these STL exports, just to make sure I get all the parts, I'll just hide them in the slicer. So next we need this. And this, I decided I wanted to give it this flange back. We're gonna go one millimeter flange. This is gonna be unhappy now. Adjust it. Get that face in there. Save. Cool. Can I export that now? STL. So now I need to make an adjustment to this part just because I made that change. This needs to be 11.2. And then I need to adjust this mate here. We got this flange here. And what I'm just doing, the reason I'm doing that is to just try to eliminate some of the surface area between these two parts. Try to eliminate some of the friction. It probably won't make a huge difference, but it's more, you know, just to satisfy the engineer in me. So one thing that I'm thinking actually I can do 
Nah, we're gonna leave it because it'll just be a pain in the ass. I was gonna say I can um like this doesn't need to be raised up anymore, but if I if I let it come down, it's gonna screw up these fillets, so it's fine. We're just gonna keep it. Let's export this. STL. And I didn't follow my rule of hiding parts, but I think I can remember. I've exported this, now I've exported this. We need this piece right here. Boom. So let's save that. Ooh, we need this to have a chamfer on it. Just make sure the chamfer's on both of these. Yeah, okay. Cool. And why is that hole bigger than this hole? 9.4. It's not, it just looks bigger. That's like one of those optical illusions. This hole looks bigger than this one because of the shape. Okay, we're good. Um, let's put a chamfer on this piece. And let's get a chamfer on this face. I probably should have done it all on the same, but it doesn't matter. Clear fast enough now. STL. So we need to save this. And this is key right here. Selected body. This is a multi-body part. I just thought it'd be easier to make this handle in the crank. So it's two different solid bodies, which is why that's an important step when you're exporting as an STL here. We're gonna do it the same on this one. Call this one uh, knob. And selected body, okay. But now we can hide that piece. We've exported this already. We just need this piece and we're good to go. It's nice. Often a lot of my sculptures have like 30 pieces. This one's like a pretty small one, which is nice. Okay. And we're just gonna export this wall bar, STL. And yeah, we are ready to go on can set up these prints. So I think I can do it all in two prints, which is nice. I have four printers, but um, I only trust two right now. This is what it is. So this will be the first build. We can export that. And then the second build, we'll get all the rest of the parts on there. Oh, I actually didn't Export, a very important part, the part that we've been working on the most today. This part right here. For this guy, I just want to clean up the edges, or just do the chamfers on this face. We'll do these faces as well. Put that, and that. Um, actually, I'm going to do those chamfers before I pattern it just to make things easier. Actually, just thinking about it now, oh, we should be fine, we should be fine. Sometimes when I do these chamfers after, it like kills all the links of the other parts that I did in the assembly and just like, it's a huge pain in the butt. But it shouldn't have that problem because I believe I made these sketches off of the center point of the hole and not the edge itself. If you don't know what I'm talking about, hopefully it'll become more clear as you watch more of these streams because that problem comes up quite often. But yeah, I'm just gonna do these manually, going all around, do them all like this. And sometimes it's fun to just like challenge myself and see how quickly I can make these. Okay, so now I wanna get a chamfer on the top of all of these and that's kind of a pain. What happens if I do this? No, I have to do this and this. Oh, nice, okay. That makes life a little bit easier. Now I just gotta go around, hit each one of these edges. This is like a little bit of like the gaming aspect of CAD. If you like try to like do this as fast as possible and like not make any mistakes. It's a little bit tedious, but if you turn it into a game, it's a little bit more fun. Okay, cool. That part's done now too. Ready for print. I'm not quite sure how this part's gonna print. But let's uh, let's throw it into the slicer and see what it looks like. Yes, all bodies. It's only one body, right? 
Should only be one body. Okay. So this one's done. Um, we'll just call it build one. We'll save that in a new folder called builds. And this is just because I'm not going to throw on the printer right away. So I'll just come back and put these on SD cards when it's all done. Um, let's get the Prusa bed and then we can throw everything except for this base. I believe it should all fit. It might not. So we're gonna line parts of the bed here. That goes that way, that goes that way, that goes that way. And this guy goes this way. Cool, yeah, so it should all fit. This guy's gonna need, like it just fits, but we can give it a little bit of an angle. Even less. Or we can give it a 45 degree angle and then we can put stuff on either side of it. Yeah, I like the way that looks. This needs to go the other way. It's funny, my proofs is like literally never ever screwed up a print, except for sometimes I'll like have a flange on something like this and I'll print it this way and I don't print the support. So we'll print this as an overhang and that will be the thing that causes the, the print fail. But otherwise, yes, yeah, so it's only ever been human error on this Prusa. Otherwise, it's always gotten the prints right, which is amazing. Okay, I'm gonna guess this is like a six hour print or maybe a seven hour print. I'm gonna print it overnight anyways, just so the printer is open and available in case I wanna print anything beforehand. But let's see how this piece looks when it prints. Seven and, so it's almost an eight hour print, but let's see, this thing will print up like this. So there's some overhangs there, but it should be fine. These guys are gonna come up. I might increase the interior infill on this piece alone, just because I don't like that these are completely hollow. Comes up to the middle and let's see like that right there. That's really the only problem zone and I think that's gonna be completely fine. From that layer to that layer. Yeah, I think that's gonna be completely fine. Amazing. Thanks, Mr. DJ. Thanks for coming by. And yeah, so that that's basically the, the print. So yeah, tomorrow, I'm gonna print this overnight. If all, else, if all goes right and nothing fails, this is gonna be ready to go tomorrow. And we're gonna see this thing working. We're gonna have to find a good wall to put it on somewhere in the shop. I'm not sure where we're gonna do it, but maybe on that back wall behind me right there. Could be cool. So the only thing missing is the thing that's gonna be dangling. I honestly think the way I'm picturing this is it's going to be as simple as where did my assembly go? Yeah. Let's show all our parts. So I had these dingleberries, these dangleberries, and all of the mates are wrong, but um, just see if I delete them all. Yes, 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 yes. I don't know if I like these. I think I want these to just be like a simple cylinder or even like, even like a block, I'm trying to find this right here. Like these are just blocks. I like the way that looks, honestly, what can I say? Um, yeah, I might just have to go with blocks. Instead of these weird, I don't really know what these are. You know what, I'm gonna mix it up. I'm gonna do hexagons. Yeah. Get real crazy here. So let's design that part quickly and then we're done. We are done. That is awesome. 
So I don't know exactly the dimensions of these right now. Let's just choose something arbitrary for now. Uh, we'll go with like 15. And just constrain that, extrude it up. Like, I don't know, 30. Let's see how that looks when we put them in. I'm gonna give it a center axis just so we can put it into place here. And we're gonna call this piece WMSW underscore dangler. Insert component. Let's get the dangler in there. And we need this axis that's going to align to this face. Beautiful. Let's take a look at it from this view. And if we copy this with mates, we can put them all in. Boom. And so there's really gonna be no way to constrain this. So we might have to just make them smaller. Yeah, there's, I don't, I don't think there's gonna be a way to like keep them from rotating. Hmm. For that reason, we're gonna do this with them. For that reason, they're just gonna be straight up circles. We'll make them nice circles though. Maybe we'll, we'll give them like a little like, shape. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, I'll see you Wednesday or tomorrow. I'll be on stream from five to seven if you can make it. So yeah, either or works. Do we want squigglies? No, straight cylinders. That's what we're going with. Straight cylinders, yeah. And we're gonna go 15. And everything else should be the same. Yeah, that's perfect. So these are the things that are gonna be dangling. So the last thing I need to do with these is just give them a way to like attach to this. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm probably gonna make like a little tool that hooks over the top of this. So you're gonna set this in its position. You're gonna hook the tool over top of this. And the tool is going to look like And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the wedge approach, with, which if you don't know what the wedges are, it's from my last design. I don't really have any examples here, do I? Yeah. I can't get it out, but basically you put the string wrap around this wedge piece right here, and then when you push it in, it like jams the fishing line in place and yeah. Gives you a nice solid dangle and it's easy to control the height. I guess this will make more sense tomorrow when we put this whole thing together. Okay. Um, awesome. Sarah, I'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy your, your day tomorrow and I'll see you in the evening tomorrow. Okay. Let's make this super nice. A nice dangler. And then now we can make our wedge cut. And we'll make it 2.5 and then this will just be like, yeah, seven, 7.5. Sounds good. Thanks, DJ, I appreciate it. Yeah, like hopefully it'll grow moving forward. But uh, listen, I'm here doing the work anyway, so I'm just happy to have anyone to hang out with. That's all that matters. Let's cut that down, 10 millimeters. But yeah, enjoy your days, guys. And um, hopefully I'll see you in future streams. Now we're gonna make the inside part of the wedge. We're gonna offset the entity. Two, five, that way, perfect. 
Now we can extrude it up. And then we're going to take this guy, we're going to turn this guy into a wedge by doing it a cut on these sides here, like this. Just like that. I'll make it a little bit bigger. But yeah, beautiful. I'll cut the wrong side here. Oops. Flip the side, boom. There we go, we got our wedge. I'm gonna make a little slit on the side here. So we have a place to hold our string. And let's make these perpendicular and equal. And make this dimension. Yeah, 1.5 works for me. Cut that. Through all, and so that's our wedge right there. So the way it works is I'm gonna take the fishing line, wrap it through here, and then I'm gonna push this into this piece right here, and that will clamp the fishing line in here in the exact spot I need it to be in, which is great. Okay, cool. So we're done, save that as an STL. Okay, selected body, we'll save our wedge. Ah, oops, oops. We're gonna save our wedge as dangler wedge. Select the body and that's it, we're done. Amazing. So this is the, the project in all its glory and tomorrow we're gonna have something in physical space in real life. It's not just gonna be a theory on a screen, it's gonna be something and hopefully it's gonna be working on the first try. Uh, this guy right here is an old piece, we don't need that. Yeah. So thanks, you guys, thanks so much for following along today, guys. Tomorrow's stream is gonna be five o'clock to seven o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. I hope to see you guys there. And